What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Bruja Africana, coming to you all with um, a couple tarot readings. Um, go ahead and do everything I need y'all to do at the beginning of the video. Um, make sure y'all can hear me first. I hope that's better. And I hope that y'all can hear me. But go ahead and um, subscribe to my channel, like my channel, share my channel, and go ahead and check out that merch in the um, description. We have merch now, Kimpo. We have merch. So, um, show me how much you fuck with me. Go down there and check out the, um, items we have. I don't have a big commercial for us yet. Give me a chance to get acclimated to being, um, monetized and being able to sell my products on YouTube and I'll, um, get a commercial together for y'all. But anyway, let's not hold y'all up. We are already almost a minute into this video and I want to go ahead and get started. Um, pull up a chair, girl. Light your blunt, because shit going to get real, real fast. Um, Y'all have been asking me for a while to do a reading on Aaliyah. And I'm going to break this reading up into um, a couple parts. I'm going to do, I'm going to start from her childhood and work our way up to when she, um, started working with Timbaland and Missy and then we're going to stop the video and we're going to go into another video um or a part two I don't know if I'm going to do two three or four parts to her video um I originally said that I was going to do four but we may not do that many or we may do more than four we may um do a lot we're going to talk a lot about baby girl and we're going to get real real on this reading and I ask that y'all join in on this reading and give your thoughts because I'm just one person. I can't remember everything. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I can remember everything from the 90s. Hell, I'm 43 years old. Um, that was shit. <laughs> 20 in the 90s, shit, that was 25 years ago for me, 25, 26 years ago. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, oh, yeah, I remember everything. But I do remember a lot of specific things about Aaliyah that I think are getting lost in the mix when it comes to um, the fans that are her fans that came along after she died. And no disrespect to you, but if you literally were born in the year 2002, I need you to be quiet, okay? Not be quiet, but I need you to maybe um, ask some people that were there. Ask the people that were adults. Ask the people that were children that had the opportunity to experience Aaliyah's music and Aaliyah's acting and the um, stories surrounding Aaliyah before you jump into... Um, you can have your opinion, but before you jump into trying to... Um, bat down or punch down somebody who literally was alive during the years when she was prior to being with R. Kelly, those of us that were alive that saw her on Star Search, um, those of us that were around that saw her perform, like she was doing a whole lot of things as a younger person. So what I'm saying is if you don't know these things, if you didn't physically see these things like a lot of us did, let us talk real quick, okay? You can put your little input, but shh, shh, shh. Okay, so I want you all to know the reading will start at four minutes. So if you want to skip ahead, go ahead. You ain't got but like three fucking minutes or three seconds because here we are at the four minute mark and let's get started. Um, Y'all ain't gonna probably like this reading, honey. Y'all know how y'all get when I get to pulling these motherfucking cards. Y'all get to feeling funny or acting funny with me. Especially when we pull in and talking about one of y'all faves or someone that you assume is your favorite. I'm going to start being more vocal about, wow, it's cool to be a celebrity and all, a celebrity, excuse me, and all of that. But I just wonder if some of these people have forgotten what it is to be a regular person. And please believe it, there's going to be an influx of um, celebrities attempting to be friends with the um general public they're going to be trying to reach out and be friends with people who are like you and i because maybe they have forgotten about what it is to be a regular person um but that's not 
the point of the video and i did tell y'all i was gonna start the video at four minutes but girl you gonna sit your ass here and look at me because i don't jump on this camera often do i <laughs> anyway there was a lot of uh questions surrounding Aaliyah's death and like i said i don't want to reveal everything in this first reading this is going to be a long reading each of them are going to be long because i feel like <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Shout out to y'all that sent me um, good energy and told me what to get to clear up that little, uh, I, it wasn't even a cold. It was some damn um, allergies that had me coughing and choking and shit. But shout out to you for telling me, go get the shit and get it done. I'm about to light my blunt real quick. Maybe I say, I should have said the video began at the six minute mark. So, you know, you got to give me time to ramble and talk because I am that tarot reader that will give you a backstory. I'm not going to just jump directly into what we're talking about because not that it wouldn't be good, but that ain't how we do things over here. So grab your blunt, grab your liquor, whatever you got, and come on, let's get started. We've already started, but let's start again. A lot of y'all are asking the question, was Aaliyah murdered? Was she sacrificed? Was there nefarious forces at play? when it came to her death. Let me speak with the um, High Priestess card, the um, On Ida card, if you will. And, oh, we are very poor 20 over here. So if you didn't know that we smoke on this channel, we smoke on this channel. Um, I, for one, would love to get a marijuana sponsorship or, you know, a raw papers sponsorship, you know, something that's above of the cannabis industry, but we gonna get there anyway. With the uh, Miss Ida card coming in, y'all do know that that is the high priestess. That is speaking of someone who knows herself or himself. We're going to say herself because we're talking about Aaliyah. Um, this is someone who knows herself. This is someone who is very strong within her own opinion of the way that she wants her life to go. She is someone who um, is sure of herself. The problem with that card coming in with Aaliyah is that her life was cut short before she could really, really see who it was that she was to become. By now, Aaliyah would have turned 45, I believe. She's a year older than me. I was born in 1980. She was born, um, let me get her birthday because I don't want y'all coming for me in these comments. Uh, she was born January 16th, 1979. She is a life path number seven. Um, she is a Capricorn sun, a Virgo moon, and Aquarius rising, not reflected in either of these cards. These cards, however, are answering the question that I feel like all of y'all already know. Was Aaliyah murdered? Yes, she was, but not in the way that y'all think. And we're going to get to that in the second part of that. But to answer that question, then yes, her spirit was snuffed out. Her spirit um, was hunted. Not haunted like boo scary shit, nah, but her spirit was being hunted by um something from a past life. I know a lot of y'all don't get down with past lives, but Aaliyah had a lot of when I looked at her chart, she had a lot of a lot where she had a lot of great things in her chart. Her chart was marred with a lot of destructive energy. And although this is the Capricorn card, this is the devil card, I want to explain why the devil card other than her being the Capricorn spoken of, excuse me, y'all. Other than her being the Capricorn spoken of in this uh, pool. These are things that were showing up in her chart that, in my interpretation, and if you're a chart reader, please correct it or give your interpretation of what you feel on her chart. I feel like she was, in, in each lifetime, she was murdered. And I feel like a man murdered her in her past lifetime and a man murdered her in this lifetime, but in a different context, y'all. And this is just my opinion and we are just having conjecture, right? Just flow with me, okay? This is my interpretation of what her cards are giving. Her cards are giving that in at least the last three lifetimes, she was murdered by a <laughs> bald-headed ass man or murdered by a man in, so to speak, her emotions were... Um, killed her career was killed like her friendships was killed it was like she had murder chasing her and 
if you delve deep enough into her chart, you'll see that in neither of her lifetimes, she lived beyond 25 years old. Of course, she died when she was 22 years old um, in 2001. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Y'all see, I got my bus down. Done. I got my bus down on. Don't worry, the locks will be back, but I just missed lose half for a second. <coughs> anyway, she had a lot of shit going on in her chart that, you know, kind of um, reflected that she would not live beyond 25 years old regardless. Even if, let's say, the plane didn't crash or when I get to that part. Matter of fact, I'm going to do part two immediately after this so I can get to it. Or if it wasn't my opinion what happened to her she still was not going to live past 25 years old i think that Aaliyah was very esoteric and she knew this she knew that um she kind of was aware of the things that were to come for her life and oh lord i murdered y'all excuse me that was so filthy i'm so sorry and i fucking burped on the camera i will never do that again i'm so sorry that fucking pepsi girl that that pepsi <laughs> but anyway she um was very esoteric that's where i left off at like i said this video is going to be very long so if you are impatient please get your ass off this video i am going to take my time and explain what i am seeing in these cards okay she was aware of the things that was coming for her life, which is why she worked very hard. Um, I'm never going to take her driving ethic away from her, her work ethic. Aaliyah had a very deep work ethic. That was that Capricorn energy. That was that I'm going to get this done. That was that um, energy of being focused. She was very focused. I know the devil card is here and y'all like, I thought that was a bad card. It is, but I'm just explaining the um, energy Aaliyah had. Um, this is both an energy reading and a reading over her very, very short life. Um, she knew what she wanted in life. She was one of those people who, if she said it, she dead ass meant it. And she would go through hell and high water to accomplish whatever it is that she said that she was going to do, which made her that person that everybody wanted to work with. <coughs> everybody wanted to work with Aaliyah. Um, she could dance. She could sing. She wasn't the strongest singer, but her work ethic outshone the fact that her voice was still immature. She was a kid, you know, she was young singing and you know, our voice has changed a couple times. I'm sure my voice does not sound the same way it did at 21. Sorry about that, y'all. But she was changing. She was getting to know who Aaliyah was as an adult. She was um, blossoming in ways that I don't think that a lot of her new fans are ready to accept. Um, and there are a lot of things about her in her past that a lot of fans, period, of Aaliyah are not willing to accept. But I tell you, the truth is really, really going to set you free and it will make you love her more as an artist because it will show you a very human side of Aaliyah that I think that you all are skipping over when you keep deitizing her. She made mistakes. She did some things that a lot of y'all don't approve of and we're definitely getting ready to talk about that. Um, she made some choices that certain a lot of y'all, the shit don't align with what y'all did, but Aaliyah made choices that she thought was good for her in the situations that she was in. Um, that whole aspect of her that y'all have, that baby girl, this baby girl, that yes, I know that was her nickname, but I think that y'all are literally making this woman remain eternally that 15-year-old girl that was victimized by R. Kelly. And I want y'all to know that he started fucking on her way before she was 15. That was like three years into their relationship. And I say that because this is going to lead over into what I'm talking about. But there's a lot of things that are hidden behind the language in 
keeping her as baby girl. There are a lot of things that y'all are not willing to face surrounding Aaliyah. I want to make sure that I point out again that Aaliyah was highly intelligent, okay? She knew what she wanted. She went after what she wanted. That included men or boys, you know, the male gender. She was um, very feminine, you know? In the black community, I don't know about anybody else's community, but y'all are my kinfolk here. But I know that it is very heavy, heavy in the black community to label little girls who are very feminine as fast. Aaliyah was fast, so to speak, and this came from her own mother. This is what the older people were labeling this girl as already, even though she was a very sweet little girl, did her schoolwork, did every, you know, she was a good little girl, but she was still fast, you know, they... Hurry up and throw that label on girls quickly. And I think that this damaged a little bit of Aaliyah's self-esteem growing up. Um, this was an effort to keep her a child, keep control on her. That four of pentacles, um, well, four of coins, excuse me, is control. That's somebody holding on to someone. Therefore, I, I, I want y'all to just see Aaliyah as a grown woman, okay? Yes, her nickname is Baby Girl, but I need y'all to understand that Aaliyah was a grown woman, okay? And even as a child, honey, she was faster than Mexican music, okay? I know I said that once in the other reading, but I'm going to say it again. I know y'all don't want to hear that part of it, but being a girl who was a tomboy that everybody misjudged, mislabeled, and was wrong as two motherfucking left shoes, honey. Aaliyah was like most of us that were just like this. Look, because I was such a tomboy, people literally labeled me as gay, not knowing that I'm fast as running water. War faster than water coming out of fucking broken hydrant on a summer day, uh, a fucking July summer day. Cool, you don't want me to be around your daughters because you thought I was gay? Cool, more beef for her. So understand that Aaliyah was this type of little girl too. You know, people, not people, let's just speak specifically on her mother because that's where we're going with this first. And that's why I said that I'm going to make this read and stretch out over um, different parts because she's got a whole lot to talk about and... It is fucked up that she was around people who really did not love her, did not care about her. All they saw was a dollar sign. All they saw was someone to sexually assault over and over and over again and pass her around to the next disgusting, grubby man who had an affinity for children. See, this was going on before R. Kelly touched her, too. By the time she got to R. Kelly, she was already broken in. But let's get to that. Like I said, Aaliyah was fast. She was fast, y'all. Just accept it. She was fast. She did her thing just like some of us did. Some of y'all that are my age or a little bit older, baby, uh, I didn't do it. But let's not play like it wasn't no grown nigga coming to pick you up from high school in his motherfucking box Chevy or his fucking two-door Cutlass or his motherfucking uh, uh, whatever the fuck he was driving in the 90s. Because if you tell a damn lie, I'm going to start telling stories, baby. Anyway, I'm just saying a lot of us know girls that was doing the same thing. Aaliyah was no different. Have y'all ever seen that movie, Just Another Girl on the IRT? That was kind of like not um, Aaliyah's story, but that's like the story of the girls in the hood. The girls that was like that. The girls that were labeled fast, so to speak. Y'all know the girl... Um, the character Chantel, she was she was labeled as fast. She was that little girl that they didn't want, you know, influencing the other kids. It was the opposite for Aaliyah because she was a good influence. She was um, a 4.0 student, sing, dance, all of that. Very, very astute young lady. So was Chantel, though. The only difference is... Well, there is no difference. Aaliyah got pregnant as a teenager, too. The only thing is she was forced to get rid of the babies that she was impregnated with. And we'll go into that as well. See, we only knew about that one by R. Kelly. How about we talk about the multiple times that he got her pregnant? 
Remember I told y'all he started messing with her when she was 12 years old. And we'll get to that. We're gonna, that's why this reading has to be this long. But anyway, although there were sneaky things going on or things that Aaliyah didn't, she, of course she didn't fucking agree to it. You know, she didn't agree with it, but she just went along with it because she was given so many things. She was promised things. People were, make sure I show this right. People were promising her things. People were taking her places. People were giving her shit. That's where, you know, that devil card shows up on her. Now, remember I told y'all there was a side to Aaliyah that y'all are just going to have to learn to accept because when you accept people in their totality, you begin to love them more and understand them more. And maybe it'll help you tell your own story. Or maybe not. Maybe it'll just help you not be so fucking judgmental and take those rosy colored fucking glasses off that you're wearing that has you believing that, oh, there are these these flawless people on this planet and they're not. Aaliyah was just as flawed as many of us were and is, okay? Accept that. But anyway, that's where that devil card energy shows up on her. Aaliyah, um, because she was given so many things and I know y'all like, Oh, I disagree. And it's okay to disagree, baby. This is going to say my opinion, okay? She was a little bit materialistic because if she did A, she would get B. And she knew that. She knew how to play the game early. She learned how to play the game early. She learned how to manipulate. She learned how to stay in a demure role, <coughs> if you will, <coughs> so that she could receive what it is that she wanted. <clears throat> and nobody other than her own mother, hold on y'all, <clears throat> nobody other than her own mother taught her that behavior. Her mother shows up as the so ass, the motherfucking hurt ass, hurt bay, motherfucking um, mother of swords, y'all know that's the queen of swords, I know that in her upright position she is telling the truth and she is this, this uh, great person, but this car came in in reverse on Aaliyah's mother, and it just gave me the energy of she is just like DMX's mama, but she kept her child around and kept abusing it. Well, she, DMX mama went back and got him and abused the shit out of him, too. That's probably why they were able to bond. They had that trauma with their mamas going on, and I know that they have led with... Oh, they had a very close relationship and da 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 and she loved her parents and da-da-da-da, all of that. Okay, this is what they just want you to see because they're painting this image of perfection surrounding Aaliyah's family too, okay? That's how y'all know some dark shit that went on and some dark shit definitely continuously went on in this young lady's life. But anyway, her mother is the source of the fucked up relationships that she has with people. Her and her mother were, were close, but they weren't that close. They were a toxic close. Um, Aaliyah's mother very much so gives narcissism in the uh, stance of the Queen of Swords being in reverse with the lover's card being in reverse. Her mother taught her the ropes of these inappropriate ass relationships that she ended up in, including the one with Dame Dash. I don't want to hear your motherfucking mouth, okay? Let's pull his, look, let his nuts go, okay? Let that nigga nuts hang. He was just as toxic for Aaliyah as the rest of these men was. If she were still alive now, she would most assuredly be one of his fucking baby's mothers. I said what I said. Let's stop being fucking delusional and putting these, these men who were literally passing this woman around, putting her as a fucking notch on their fucking belt. I had her. No, I had her too. Oh, I had her in this way. This is basically what these niggas was doing, but y'all love to praise. Oh, Dame was so in love with her. Yeah, he was so obsessed with her like Jay-Z was too. Just like R. Kelly was. Just like Timbaland was, okay? Just like I don't know who this woman was. I feel like now knowing what we know, it might have been Mary J. Blige. There's a woman in her fucking pool that, girl, let's keep talking. Anyway. Aaliyah's mama started this shit, which is still on point for what I'm saying. Like she had so many toxic ass relationships going on around her that she she began to lose discernment. OK, although Aaliyah was very, very book smart, she was so vanilla when it came to dealing with people. And it was because her mother was a bully. 
Now, see, all of this toxic shit comes from her mama. And I forgot to get her mama's um, Zodiac information. If anybody can drop that in the uh, comments, that would be appreciated because we're going to need it because we going to do these readings on this girl. We're going we gonna to get to what happened to Aaliyah and why it happened. Why the universe finally fucking said enough. Yes, it hurt to lose her, but there's a reason, y'all. But anyway, her mama is the source of this shit. Her mama. Her mama is the one who, first of all, and I don't like to, I don't like to use the word schmegs worker, okay? Let's just say that because I want to stay monetized on these videos. I don't like to use schmegs worker, but there are cards that indicate that Aaliyah's mama might have, you know, kind of put her out there. Y'all know where I'm going with this. She kind of put her out there with this uh, daughter of knives. This is a girl who's been touched on and who has been put in positions that um, are unsavory, very unsavory, by people who are supposed to care about her. Um, if this is a artist of some sort, this is an artist that's being used. Aaliyah was being used by Barry Hankerson, her own fucking uncle, okay? She was being used from an early age. He signed her to his record label and I promise on the next reading I'm gonna be more complete but I just needed to get on here and do this reading um he signed her to his fucking record label at 12 years old at 12 years why do you need a 12 year old on your record label just because this was his niece okay Aaliyah was very smart she could sing she could dance um and not only that she was pretty he could market her for sex he could use her to be the next it girl who was popping before Aaliyah that was gonna say I can't remember see y'all was born I, I grew up in the fucking 90s and I can't remember you asked me any gangster rap shit though I can tell you all about that but Mary J Blige wasn't considered sexy so it wasn't Mary J Blige it was Monica Brandy and Aaliyah okay but Monica and Brandy wasn't necessarily considered oh my look like my lash popping off but they weren't necessarily considered sexy. Uh, Brandy had that whole girl next door lane sewn up. And Monica was the hood chick, the fast hood chick. And it, it fucks me up that y'all will easily or that Monica was so easily labeled as fast because her skin is browner than, than um, Aaliyah's is. But y'all refused to accept that Aaliyah was fast and a motherfucker too. Okay. And so was Brandy. This was the whole thing. Brandy made a comment that Aaliyah and um, Monica were too fast, but this motherfucker was doing the same thing, okay? But we'll talk about Brandy and her reading. Anyway, Aaliyah's mama started this shit. She, her cards really, okay, let me just be real with what her cards reflect to me. To me, her cards reflect that her mama was pimping her out, that her mama was, uh, Maybe telling her, if you love mama, you do this, you know. And I know y'all going to be like, that was probably her doing that for music and da-da-da-da-da. Okay, yeah, she was doing this for music. But what was she telling her to do? What was she doing or having her daughter do in these musical situations that Aaliyah felt like <coughs> it was betrayal? See, Aaliyah didn't fucking like whatever the fuck it was that her mama was having her do. <coughs> sure, Aaliyah liked to sing and dance and all of that, but it was the shit that was coming with it. See, I told y'all that Nana Coins energy is, while it's good, it's sneaky ass energy. Y'all know time had run out on her mama, you know. Her mama wanted to sing and wanted to do all of that, wanted to be the big show girl. Her mama wanted to be the it girl. That was, that was her dream. Aaliyah very well may have wanted to uh, sing originally and all of that, but she also may have wanted to be in academia, too. Again, the girl had a fucking 4.0 grade point average all four years in high school, okay? So she may have wanted to do something else. But again, her mama comes across with that energy that if you love mama, you'll, you know, feeding us some game, telling her what we can buy with the money. Don't tell your daddy. You know, I know her daddy had a good job, but Aaliyah's mother gives really grimy energy, y'all. Okay, and that's what I'm at with this. Like, her energy is not, um, is disgusting, okay? I'm going to say it as it is. 
her mother started the trend of the fucked up relationships or the fucked up situationships with these men that she got in. Okay. Aaliyah couldn't even trust the woman who was supposed to love her first. Okay. So she sell her some game, you know, tell her if you love mama, you will and of course, Aaliyah loved her mama, so she believed in it. So what was Aaliyah doing? Being passed around. Laying down with old men. You see, there's old men up there. This is her her mama not only turning her blind eye or women surrounding Aaliyah turning her blind eye. This is Aaliyah laying down in the bed, not knowing what to expect. Laying with these grown-ass men being paid. Six of coins, I told y'all, it's a beautiful card, but it's a dangerous card. This is somebody giving you money, but they have control over the way they give you the money or they're controlling you with gifts or things that they give you because they know that you are in no position to do it for yourself. Aaliyah's mother took full advantage of this. And I'm going to say allegedly, okay? And this is just what I'm saying in these cards, okay? She took full advantage of herself being her mother. Remember, if you love your mama, and I'm not saying that she said that, but this is the energy that she's giving. If you love mama, you'll, you know, you'll go mess with Mr. Who and whoever, Mr. So-and-so. You'll let Mr. So-and-so touch it so that you can get on this stage and sing. If you don't do it, he ain't going to let you sing. He ain't going to this. He ain't going to that. And this is just the energy that her mother is giving me. And again, Aaliyah like, okay, I'm going to do it because I want to make my mama proud. I want my mama I want to be just like my mommy and my mommy is so beautiful and so this and so that. And it, it, her mama just usually your mama is your queen. Her mama was her queen and she didn't believe that her queen would be lying to her. So, yes, she would go and go lay with these old men or let these old men touch her. Or let some of her family members touch on her because her mama ain't going to say nothing. Because if you love me, baby, you keep that secret. I get you some gifts. See, her mom was guilty of this shit too. I get you some gifts. I get you some gifts. I'll do some things for you. You know, pouring into her that this is what is supposed to happen. If you allow somebody to violate you, you know, there was a lot of men that had her handling their business. You know, handling they handling they mop stick. Some old men that 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 really just foul. Okay, I remember. As a child, I used to always be so upset because I was a fat ass little girl. Yeah, I'm a fat little girl, boy. And I was a fat teenager, too. I remember, I, and I'm going to get right back to the reading, but I say this to say my heart mourns for those of you who have been sexually violated. Um, I'm glad I was rejected as a child. You know, that um, saying... Or when I was younger, too. I'm glad that I was. Um, rejection is God's protection. I'm glad that I was fat. I'm glad that I was so unappealing to predators. I'm glad that I was able to grow up and not be violated. Aaliyah was not afforded this. And she was not afforded this at the behest of her mother. Her own mother put her out there. Her own mother put her daughter put her daughter in the way of these wolves and she was okay with it and Aaliyah didn't like that shit that shit bothered her that shit bothered her soul and that's the type of energy Aaliyah gave although yeah yeah she was fast but so what who the fuck's daughter ain't everybody's daughter ain't but so what your ass probably was too okay but let's not angelicize her okay because she did some things that she should not have done too okay Aaliyah didn't like this shit. She, um, she was like, it's not worth it. You know, she even, you know, began to complain in some situations. She was really hurt by some of these men. And I don't mean, well, she was hurt, men, was hurt mentally and emotionally, of course. But I mean, physically, she was hurt by these men during these acts. And she worried about this shit, you know, like. How much more do I have to do? But the more she did this shit and the more she turned her head and participated and not complained, the more her mother gave her, the more opportunity she got. And like I said, Aaliyah got pregnant, y'all. Okay, this is a terminated pregnancy. 
prior to her being with R. Kelly, because right now we're not talking about R. Kelly. When she was younger, somebody else allegedly potentially could have gotten her pregnant and they got rid of it. This is where the tale of her being fast came from and being outside. That's her Sag moon showing up, okay? That's her Sagittarius, her, I'm sorry, her Virgo moon, excuse me, showing up. Aaliyah was outside. I said Sag, I'm sorry, y'all. Her Virgo moon showing up. She was outside. She was full. She was not full of herself, but she fully accepted that she may have been ruined because we know that she had a low self-esteem. Ali used to wear hair over her eye and hide herself. That is what this is about. That is this nine of sticks energy with this nine of swords or this nine of knives, excuse me. This is why this energy is present. That is her self-esteem being robbed. This is her not feeling so hot about herself because of the things that she has endured sexually, mentally, emotionally. She's being manipulated by all the adults around her, you know. And the only way that she can find comfort in what it is that she's going through is she, she uses her imagination. She escapes. She spends a lot of time in her head imagining what things would be if her life were different. Even after they moved to Detroit, like she had been being molested for a long time. Um, like I said, she appears to have gotten pregnant and gotten rid of a baby prior to um, her dealing with R. Kelly. Told you all of the people around her were manipulating her. The relationships that she had with each adult in her life was trash. Each of them saw her, saw some purpose for, not and not any good intent behind it. They 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 saw some illicit reason to fuck with her, you know. And it wasn't like she wasn't saying anything. It wasn't like she wasn't saying anything. And her, I was wondering if this was her grandmother being spoken of. Because it was like Aaliyah told her grandmother. But it's not that she believed that she was lying. But she didn't believe Aaliyah. She um, believed that Aaliyah was very creative and could make up stories. She probably could because she could write songs and shit, they said, when she was little. But um, her grandmother or this older woman that she was telling, whomever this is, she trusted and went and told, they didn't believe her. They didn't believe her. They either thought she was lying or they just outright like, yeah, right, that didn't happen. None of these things are going on because they were turning a blind eye. This hurt Aaliyah. This is why she fell into, you know, let me just go and be this, this, this person that they've conditioned me to be. They said that I need to be sexy, and by they, I mean her mama. And the people that were around her, they say, I need to be sexy. They say, I need to be this. They say, I need to be that. Okay, cool. Since nobody's going to believe me or they're going to believe what they want to believe, fine. I'll deal with my heartache the way, I, the best way that I can. That's where the destruction begin, y'all. And I am trying to find the devil card because I need to go into the portion where the things that y'all don't want to believe the things that y'all don't want to accept the things about Aaliyah that um y'all might as well go and get ready to start hearing because this is the year of things being exposed and there will be some shit exposed about her that is going to be extremely toxic so after Aaliyah figured you know nobody is going to believe me or she figured she ain't figured shit she sees that ain't nobody finna believe her she's surrounded by people that's like yeah, right, kid, go play type energy. Go, go, go do what you're supposed to do so that, you know, you can be this star. Because all of them by now figured out she could sing, she could dance, she, she's beautiful. We can use her for a multitude of reasons. Go do what we ask you to do. Get out of our face. Go away from us with this Apollo. You know, this is the energy they own with her, with her telling them that these people are doing shit to her. Or she's having these inappropriate relationships with these grown people. Nobody's listening. So she falls into the shit. She falls into the toxicity, if you will. Tits deep, baby. She like, fuck it. 
And although she kept up a very clean image, things were getting out of control for Aaliyah, y'all. Um, the temperance card shows up as the, um, who is that? I'm sorry, the uh, railroad bill shows up first with the temperance following that with um, speaking that Aaliyah was spiraling out of control at some point. Um, there is energy speaking, spoken of, of drinking and drug use that allegedly was going on. And I know y'all like, oh, she didn't do nothing. She didn't, she didn't. Oh, yes, she did. We're going to get to that in another reading. Yes, the fuck she did. Just like many of your other favorite celebrities, okay? She began to self-medicate. There was a lot of what those glasses were about. Um, drinking is mentioned. Um, she also may have developed a little bit of nymphomia because also with the temperance card coming up, that speaks of sexual energy and that speaks of her being out of control sexually. This is the beginning of the toxic energy that was going on surrounding her. And like I said, none of these men that she was dealing with, signed to, making music with, none of them wanted anything other than to use her for her body, use her for whatever they could get out of her. None of them did. And like I said, there's a woman showing up. I don't know who this bitch is, okay? But here's a woman who is involved in the shit too. And this isn't her mother. There's a woman that lusted after Aaliyah too and potentially slept with Aaliyah, okay? I remember there were those rumors that people were saying that she was bisexual. Maybe that was not a rumor because here is a chick showing up, okay? Is that Missy Elliott? Is that Mary J. Blige? I don't know. Uh, we don't know. Who who was the big queen then, y'all? Y'all, we gonna deal with that later. I say it's Mary J. Blige. Anyway, then she runs into R. Kelly after already being, you know, violated by people, you know. This is by the time she's 12, 13 years old. She, this, all of this shit has already happened to her, according to her chart. And it'll continue because her chart, like I said, is marred and trash. Like, that poor girl's chart is so heavy i had to get up off of her chart because it is it's ridiculous for somebody to have that type of life and to have that type of beautiful soul and have to go through this shit. like i said i believe that there are some things that are following her from past lifetimes and when she is reincarnated she will have to solve them but anyway she meets r kelly's dirty ass and of course they begin making music he begins writing for, doing things, you know, age ain't nothing but a number. You know, we was bopping to that shit, not knowing he was bopping her. He making her, you know, be that, that queen that she was. He he sat Aaliyah in front of us and he gave us that, that tomboy girl, like I said, that was just like many of us. And that was working for her. She absolutely enjoyed her time. Um... Or not enjoyed it. She enjoyed her studio time. Let me put it like that. Aaliyah had gotten to the point where this was the only place that she could reflect her pain or get that pain out of her chest. She also developed a love for cigarettes or that weed that she's smoking. Like I said, y'all, she started self-medicating a lot, okay? Stop believing that this girl was a goody two-shoe because, like I said, she had a, some type of habit going on, Okay. Whatever that type of habit was, she was spending money on it or somebody was spending money to get it to her, okay? This is her spending money on whatever drug habit or whatever this 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 um new vice that she develops when she's around R. Kelly. I, for one, personally believe she was snorting cocaine. That's just my opinion. Do with it whatever you would like, okay? With her self-medicating came her energy of um, dealing with these men who were abusive, these men who meant her no good, these men who were simply passing her around because, again, she was beautiful, she was brave, she had a work ethic that could not be rivaled, or could be rivaled, excuse me. Yeah, there was Brandy, there was Monica, but this was Aaliyah. It meant something to these dirty old men to have possession of this girl. Like, they, they all come in in reverse, let me make sure. These dishonest men 
that were around her, these dishonest humans. Let me say that because, again, I believe that that woman that is showing up in that space of dishonesty was Mary J. Blige. And I could be wrong. It could be Missy Elliott. You know, these people are coming out as wolves these days, but I doubt it. It doesn't give Missy energy. It absolutely gives Mary J. Blige. But anyway, she's having these toxic, fucked up relationships with these people from the time she's young. Okay. From the time she's young. But specifically with these men who are passing her around because she's simply fresh meat. Y'all know how in the 90s these niggas treated light skinned girls. She was a light-skinned piece of ass for them. A young light-skinned piece of ass that all of them had to have a piece of. None of them wanted any type of relationship with her. No. They was all just chilling. They was all just chilling and having fun. And y'all can believe that stupid bullshit that Dame Dash is talking all you want to. Oh, she was the love of my life. No, she wasn't. She was the lover for right now for him. Like I said, had, they, had she lived, she would fully be a fucking baby mama right now. If they had gotten married, it would not have lasted. Because Dame could be outside his damn self. He only appreciates her because she's dead now. Much like everybody else that is singing her praises. You're only speaking highly of her because she's dead. Because while she was alive, a lot of y'all were wild judgmental of her. Okay? Anyway. She's having these sort fucked up relationships with these men who are old enough to be her fathers or at least big uncles. None of them want anything. Like I said, Aaliyah had started self-medicating. She was hurting, y'all, even when she was in a relationship with Dane, but we jumping too head, far ahead. She was hurting. She was in a position to where is that she was just still getting money for her family, making her family proud. But she had to sacrifice her dignity and was being passed around to these men who she knew didn't give a fuck about her. She knew that um, these situations weren't going to work. But somehow she found solace in R. Kelly. Somehow she thought she was in love with R. Kelly. Somehow the man who continued the cycle of abuse, because again, I want to point out before I go off into R. Kelly's part in this car, these are the men in, R in, in Aaliyah's family as well. There are at least two men in her family that sexually assaulted her before she got to R. Kelly. This is why he was able to easily break her heart, break her in and, and do things to her, you know, get her pregnant, continue this fucked up situation, marry her at 15 fucking years old because she was pregnant. That wasn't the first time. Many people saw and, and, and knew what was going on with Aaliyah. They just chose to turn their heads. They chose to turn their heads. They chose to turn a blind eye to the things until shit hit the fan for. And we gonna pick up in the next reading right there, y'all.